The other thing we have here is uh, a little tiny focus of something else. Let's see, give it a second for that to focus up. What's going on here? Just a little incidental finding. Does anyone know? So right. Yeah, here we've got something that the body seems to think doesn't belong, right? It's got foreign body giant cell reaction forming a, a, a foreign body granuloma around this aggregate of kind of clear, um, fragmented, see how it's kind of like a regular little sheet-like um, material. And it, we can't do it here on a virtual slide, but under the microscope, if you flip your condenser or put your finger under the light source, you can see that there's kind of a three-dimensionality to this. You can imagine it here, but it, it kind of, it's what we call refractile, right? You can see the light makes the edges of it stand out. Uh, there's probably a more elegant scientific explanation uh, for how to explain refractile, but that's what it looks like to me. It looks a little bit 3D. And so whenever I see something that looks kind of refractile in 3D and there's giant cells around it, I suspect that it's probably foreign material or, or maybe foreign material. And so in this case, this is actually, this is actually injected steroid, Kenalog, uh, or, or some other uh, form of injected um, corticosteroid. And for some, you can usually see this in the middle of the scar, like in keloids particularly, when they've tried to inject them with steroids and then decide eventually to remove them. You'll sometimes see little islands of this in the middle of the scar tissue. And here it's kind of outside the scar. It does not always have a foreign body reaction around it. In fact, most of the time when I see it, it does not, but I guess it can. Um, uh, and I'm not exactly sure why that, what, what, if it's uh, some uh, additive in there or something that makes the foreign body giant cells uh, react to it. I don't know enough about the makeup of the, of the uh, actual injected steroid that, about what makes the giant cells come to it. But if you see this like kind of frothy, whitish blue, um, it, it, sometimes it looks a little bit different color than this. Um, I don't know if, it, if, I don't know why it looks this way here, but anyway, you can, um, you can think about that. That might just be steroid. Also, if you see something that looks like foreign material in a scar, it could be that the person had like a penetrating injury and foreign material got there, like a foreign body got there. And that can be helpful, actually, if you're trying to decide if something's a scar. If you polarize the tissue and you find little fragments of polarizable stuff or little bits of suture or gauze, like gauze material, sometimes little tiny strips come off of the gauze. It's totally normal. Um, it happens in pretty much every operation. And then you'll get little tiny fragments of it in the middle of the scar. That can tell you for sure, you know, this patient has had either a, a trauma or an operation, something that has inserted this foreign polarizable material into their dermis and then scar is formed. So it can be helpful sometimes if you're debating, if you don't know the history and you're wondering, is this a scar or not? Polarize the tissue and see if you find foreign material. That can be a helpful thing. And then um, regular scar, hypertrophic scar, keloid. I feel like some people say hypertrophic scars should not have keloidal collagen bundles. I don't really know if that's true. I've always thought that any that a keloid looking scar could either be keloid or hypertrophic scar, depending on clinically if it's just you know a kind of stretched out wider scar or if it's bulging out beyond the margins of where the original injury to the skin was. Um, so I don't know. Some people may have said, oh, you shouldn't have keloidal collagen in a hypertrophic scar. And I was like, I don't know who made that rule, but I don't care. So in any case, if I saw this, I would just say scar and I would sign it out. Okay, guys. Next case.